Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. During a recent sale on the Milviz slash Blackbird Simulations website, a one day sale, I managed to pick up the Cessna 310. And because the special features of the Cessna 310 here that justified the price that we're paying for it, is that it's got persistent wear and tear and failures and stuff like that. It benefits from being flown at length as opposed to my normal quick testing of things. Now there are a lot of planes like that, but this one in particular I was looking at for its failure simulation and wear and tear simulation. And so I'm going to put that to work. And I'm going to put it to work by flying around the world with it. Now this is not a normal plane that I fly to fly around the world with. I normally fly very fast things like the Dark Star. <laughs> well, that's at the high end. Uh, the Concord, the SR-71 Blackbird. Hopefully Blackbird Simulations will eventually come out with the SR-71 Blackbird. They plan to as far as I know. And so yeah, they rebranded. Milviz has changed their name to Blackbird Simulations. And yeah, I normally fly faster things or in the around the world in A planes a mix of things, but I will try, and this will take a while, uh, to fly around the world with this plane. And we are going to take it slowly and obviously take a look at the sights. It's good for that sort of thing. It doesn't fly very high. And so we are going to be doing a sightseeing thing. And I'll try and hit the most sightseeing happy locations. You know, we can uh, try and see all these uh, spots. Well, not all of them, but as much as possible. I really want to actually go down south and uh, sort of go up the Caribbean, but I'll think about that because they, they really need to add something to Mexico over here and uh, Central America and, of course, South America. Lots of work needs to be done, but there might be mods to help out with that. And if I can add some sites like that, then we might go down uh, into Mexico, down to Panama, and then around the Caribbean and up Florida. So we've got a couple of different routes to start off, but ultimately we're going to have to go across and see all these things and so forth. So with that being the plan, first of all, we are taking off from Friday Harbor. And that is because it was the default uh, takeoff location for Flight Sim 10 and I had no better idea. So we're going to take off from Friday Harbor. Uh, and I'm going to set the time a little bit different. We'll have real world weather throughout, so live weather, but I'm going to set the time differently because I'll be recording uh, close to nighttime and that's no good for, um, you know, scenery. We want to be able to see things. So yeah, not real time, but yes, real world weather. All right. So with all that being the case, uh, let's go. I'm starting on a ramp. And I will do the startup and shutdown procedures. It's really easy, so it's not going to be a huge thing. Okay, so Friday Harbor. And we are parked. So, uh, first of all, let's get the pad out and take a look. So, it's got this tablet. And it actually has a ladder that retracts with the landing gear. So, you can see back there. I have my own custom livery, you may notice. I uh, as, as is customary, I'm going with... Uh, Serial number 412, that is what I use for my own private planes. If you watch my Kerbal Space Program series, uh, you will note that some of my designs also have numbers for them, but the plane that I am flying is always 412 in reference to the Vostok 1 and STS-1 space missions. They both occurred on April 12th. So, back in here. We, uh, we need to set it so that it is owned. So this is an owned. We have realism, individualization, engine realism, system realism, wear and tear, and occasional failures. I don't want frequent. I'm not trying to be a sadist about this whole thing. Uh, but yeah, we want occasional failures just to spice things up. And yeah, well, we'll remove all that stuff. Fine. Let's just close the door. I saw that it worked. Okay. So we have a co-pilot. Hello. I don't know if I want her in a formal uniform like that, but it'll be fine for now. Okay, we do not need all the fuel. Pretty sure even this amount is much more than we... Yep. I want to hit 63, but it won't let me. Anyway, much more than we need for the flight that we have. 
we're clean and rate of change static. No, rate, rate of change um, normal. Normal is good. Okay. We will see how that works out. We're using the Asobo system. All right. I think we are ready to go with all that stuff. So taking a look at the checklist, starting it up is really easy. I think I've gone through all the basics. Uh, I've removed the control lock. I've set the parking brake. All the switches are off. The circuit breakers are in. Landing gear is down. Uh, the fuel selectors. Um, that's left. That's right. That's fine. Batteries here. Okay, we have battery, nav lights, fuel gauges, check quantity, that's fine. Seems fine to me. Okay, well, not battery switch off. We actually want to go now. We've removed the covers, we inspected things, and the lighting, well, it's fine-ish. Okay, throttle open one inch, propeller f and mixture full forward, cowl flaps locked full open, and they are here, I think. That's full open, unless that's full closed if it's 100%. Um, okay, fuel selectors, yes, they are the way they are. All right, left magneto switch switches on, left engine ones. And yeah, and then start, and then have that and alternator. Now oil pressure, yes, oil pressure is fine. Okay, right magneto switches, primer switch right, and start. And pump low, and alternator on, and yes, oil is fine. Both throttles, 800 to 1000. Okay, checking the alternator outputs. This, the battery seems to have zero volts. I hope that's okay. I mean, well, zero whatever it is. That doesn't seem right to me, but anyway, the alternators are fine. Okay, so now we can go, hopefully. Oh, avionics. Okay, we have our intended map there. So Friday Harbor is one of those handcrafted places. And we can see the buildings are sort of special. Well... I mean, this isn't the way I want to face if I'm... I don't know, I think I made a mistake. Whatever, if it's supposed to be runway 34, runway 34 it is, and I'll just do a U-turn. Okay. Off to an interesting start. All right, here we go. What is that windsock doing? It's doing something weird over there. Okay, well, just enough runway over here. Look, here's some cabin lights. Uh, well, that's better than nothing. Well, there's our takeoff runway over there. It's a little bit high on the RPM here. And we don't want to really ascend too far. It's not great for fuel efficiency. But we are trying to sightsee here. 
Well, just so we stop wiggling around, I'll try and get the autopilot set up. Okay, we are on track now. I would not mind going up a bit. So, here we are on our inaugural flight. Island to our left seems to be Whidbey Island. We have a EJ Eisenberg Airport somewhere over there. There's a couple of airports. There's a Whidbey Island NES back there. That's a two runway one back there. Then there's another airport in front of us, uh, Coopville Air Park. That's that one in front of us. I really like that the engines and everything look perfectly well detailed from in here as well. No problems with the detailing. Of course, uh, there's some edges on the stripes because I redid those in Photoshop. I made the livery, so uh, that might have been my fault. Oh, I hope my passenger isn't... Oh, they're really upset. Cabin is cold and getting colder. Oh, sorry. Uh, we'll turn on the heat. Temperature control is all the way down. Let's just put midway. Okay, well, we're no longer in red. It's getting better. Hopefully. Now, if only they complain about it. I need to figure out some sort of career mode thing with this. Okay, yes, it's warming slowly. Um, yeah. Get credit for hauling passengers all over the place. Well, we are approaching Seattle with Mount Rainier pretty prominent in the distance there. That's nice. Good viewing distance. I think I'll descend a bit, just for sightseeing purposes. Oh, we can see Seattle over there. We can see the buildings now. Lots of glare in here, uh, though if I focus out there we can see Mount Rainier again. Ballard Bridge. Well... have to descend faster to see this Ballard Bridge. Yeah, I think it was added by a mod, by the way. I have uh, some Seattle bridges in the mod pack. Let's see here. I think there's a fairly simple bridge over there, but it might just be a causeway kind of bridge. Well, nice sort of place here. I don't know if that's anything too special right there. I think that's it though. There's a nicer bridge over to the left though. Uh, I'm gonna take it off autopilot. As dangerous as that might be. Okay, downtown Sac uh, Seattle. Downtown Seattle. Space Needle. I don't know what's so space about it, but it's there. Mostly just stock photogrammetry around here. Very prominent century link field. Okay. All right, on we go to oh, a little bit of stutteriness there suddenly. Uh, what's going on 
Okay, let's go back inside. Oh, yeah, let's not do that. Okay, well, anyway, on to the next thing. A riff. I don't know what riff was. We'll find out. It is in 61 nautical miles. And we should ascend again. Up, no, no, up, 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 up. Well, there's SeaTac. The tree pack is sporting the fall textures already. I don't know if everything has turned all, all autumn in its colors yet in real life, but uh, we are using those colors right now. Well, head down along I-5 here with Mount Rainier still firmly in view as it would be. told the autopilot to level out at 6,000 feet. So I think Sim Update 10 improved the VFR map. Yeah, you can click on things and get information. And there's a search function. Well, whatever that was showing me, I don't know what it was, but uh, yeah. A little bit more like the functionality of the X-Plane one. You can get the frequency like that. I have no idea why the track on my GPS has not changed. I mean, here we can see that I'm following it fairly closely. I mean, a little bit off, but uh, here it doesn't seem right at all, considering my range is 35 nautical miles there. Not sure what's going on. But we are headed down here. One thing that sometimes shows up and other times doesn't is uh, the points of interest that I have marked out. Sometimes they have the labels, sometimes those labels don't show up. I wish they would just always show up. But oh well, right now we don't have the point of interest label. I thought there was a dam there that we were headed towards. This is uh, Fredrickson. That's that town or city that we're flying over. It is span away to our right. I guess that's span away. This town over here may or may not be Elk Plain. Okay, so yeah, we're headed towards Rift Lake, and that's what we've got on the GPS, Rift Lake. And there's a Mossy Rock Dam on one end of Rift Lake, and we'll see whether that dam shows up properly. Oh, now Mount Rainier, and we can see Mount St. Helens over there with its blown peak. We gotta be getting a lot closer to Mount St. Helens, I think. Some of the sites that I've plotted are Mount St. Helens relevant. I think this lake that we see oops, that we see to our left here is Alder Lake. Or Alder Lakes. Uh, no, Alder Lake. But I don't know, it might wind behind that hill there to join itself up. So, Mount Rainier there, Alder Lake there. 
Yeah, I think that hill is just obscuring the fact that it's just one unified lake there. Okay, Rift Lake Dam is what they call it here, even though the map calls a difference. Calls it the Mossy Rock Dam. Alright, uh, let me take it off of autopilot. Oh, something's going on there. Oh, that's a pretty long dam. And it's sure holding a lot back, because the uh, river past it is thin. Uh, let's see if we can get the view from the opposite side. Obviously from the lake side we can't see too much. Okay, so that's what it looks like from this side. Well, pretty good. I can see obvious detail on that. Alright, next is Tower Rock, 25 nautical miles away. Oh, I think I can see the rock right now. Well, I was worried it would be hard to spot, but no problems, that's quite a rock. Okay, Tower Rock right there. Let's look outside. Okay, there it is as we are alongside it. Interesting formation. And we continue. Next is Tac Tac Lava Flow. And I'm guessing that has something to do with Mount St. Helens. We're definitely headed towards Mount St. Helens right now. Oh, cutting this particular mountain close here, we get a good look at the trees. It's sure covered in trees. We've got good tree rendering around here. Well, from the get-go, Flight Sim has always been proud of its trees. And of course, I also have the Bijan Hibashi tree pack. So we are in super tree territory here. Well, I don't know what to look for as far as the lava flow. I think it must be that right there. So sort of that stripe that we see. We're gonna basically be making a U-turn after checking this out. So we won't go around Mount St. Helen or anything. Mount St. Helens. Okay, so this is the remnant lava flow, a continued mark from the devastating eruption. Interesting. Otherwise, life has continued and replenished itself but still that mark is there all right before we get into too high a landscape which we are really we're really getting into right now it's barely clearing that oh that's too much vertical speed though jumbo peak well geez shouldn't we see that pretty obviously we probably should have seen it already, Jumbo Peak. Oh, is it that thing? Okay, well that's weird. I'll have to take a closer look. Well, I don't know what to make of that Jumbo Peak. Oh, it's just grown a bit. <laughs> I don't 
no. Interesting outcropping again. Area has a tendency to have rocks jutting out apparently. Okay. Next, Lake Ryan. Uh, I certainly won't be descending for a lake. We'll just pass by. And then I think we'll, we'll be on to sites in Oregon after that. Oh, how's our passenger doing? Uh, Cameron is comfortable and steady, so no problems. Yeah, after Lake Ryan is Lewis, Lewis and Clark Bridge. Okay, I think Lake Ryan must be around here somewhere. Is it that one? <laughs> Don't tell me it's that tiny little lake there. I think it is. Yes, that is Ryan Lake, that, that little one right there. I don't know why it's important. I'm sure there's a reason. I think there's a little thing in there. I don't know. Well, on our way to the next site, I will look that up. Well, the Washington Trails Association website says that uh, it was obviously devastated by the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Uh, three campers staying there lost their lives. While much of the area was opened up to logging afterwards, salvage logging afterwards, Ryan Lake was allowed to remain in this natural post-blast state to recover. Well, yeah, I think that's all I see about it. At some point I'm going to have to look to switching tanks. We've been consuming from the main tanks. We do have the auxiliary tanks. Actually I'd rather save the main tank fuel for landing and switch now and then before landing switch back so that we can be sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now we're on the ox tanks. Just briefly flick to uh, the engine off segment accidentally for both of them. Uh, okay, so it should be the auxiliary tanks feeding now, which are the wingtip tanks over there. Well, I think I see the Columbia River there. Of a turn necessary to get closer to Lewis and Clark Bridge, and since it's a bridge, we should probably descend. Lewis and Clark Bridge is out of a city called Longview. Which I think is right there. I think that's the city of Longview to our right there. Oh, I see the bridge there. Well, let's uh, turn more. So that's Longview and Lewis and Clark Bridge. So it's like that. Okay, onward. So next is the Astoria Megler Bridge. Which I guess it's uh, close to Astoria. Oh, that, that bridge is Highway 101. Alright, that I understand. I like Highway 101. Very scenic sort of highway. Click to show bobblehead. Wait a second. Oh, we have bobbleheads? Okay, but... It says one of nine. So how do I get the others? <laughs> uh, well, that's a little Easter egg, isn't it? But yeah, I'll have to figure out where to get the other bobbleheads from. 
Okay, well, I think I can see the bridge there. Most of it is sort of just flat. It's got a suspension. Well, that's probably a trestle or truss segment over there. And it's got it's another truss segment over on the Washington state side. So, this here is pre presumably the city of Astoria. Whoa, quite a glare from the sun on the water there. And this is the Astoria Megler Bridge, which is also Highway 101. Fairly long bridge across this portion of the Columbia River. And it's got sort of a, there's another part there. Anyway, we have to turn south now. And next is Haystack Rock. As I wanted to hit some of these sites in Northern Oregon prior to landing in Portland. I've got a Portland Bridges pack as well, so we'll see some, hopefully see some nice bridges at Portland. So according to the Blackbird Sim, the former Milviz website, there's 236 persistently saved points of wear in the engines, systems, and instrumentation. And so this rewards proper care and attention. I have set the individualized button and the ownership experience. So we are going to find out what that means on over the long term here. And it says that the condition of the cockpit and everything will be saved at the end of each flight. So I'll try and shut down properly. I see something jetting out over there. Maybe that's the rock. That's a bunch of little rocks. It's something. And there's that rock. Oop, that just popped up a bit. Is Cannon Beach. That's the town's name. Oh! Uh, Haystack Rock is getting a little bit more complicated as we go along. I don't know, I, I, I don't know, is it supposed to look like a mushroom? I'm pretty sure, uh, maybe that's underneath the, no, something's gone wrong there. I'm, I'm gonna venture that something's, when I mean, we see some stuff underneath the water, that's obvious, but, uh, oh, it popped back down again. Yeah, I'm not sure it's supposed to do that. <laughs> something, something was wrong there. With like one of the LODs, the height of it, I don't know. There's another little island in front of us there. Okay, we have to make a minor turn along the coast. And we're headed to Tillamook. There's some site at Tillamook. Which I feel like I know because of some cheese. Oh, there's some ice cream too, apparently. Dairy. Tillamook has dairy. Apparently it is a great destination for his history buffs and cheese and wine lovers. So definitely cheese. Well, another bit of a close shave with a hill here, or a mountain. go. Nice trees. There's a thing on that. Some sort of tower over there. Or is that a wind turbine? Can't be just one wind turbine though, right? This is Nehalem Bay State, apparently. Or at least that's what the airport is called. 3S7. Where is that? Oh, it's that grass strip right there. Nehalem Boulevard is... Highway 101 over here. There's the Nehalem River outlet. You can sort of see Highway 101 or the Nehalem Boulevard right below us. It looks flooded, <laughs> but uh, maybe that's just the lighting. Tillamook Air Museum. That's what it was. Well, I don't know what kind of site that is, but we'll take a look. Air Museum sounds interesting. Well, I guess it was a former blimp hangar is what it is. It used to accommodate blimps. Okay, so that's the town of Tillamook right there. It 
sort of tucked in from the coast as opposed to right on it. Got this huge bay here that it could be on, but uh, nope, uh, tucked away from that a little bit. I thought they said there was a huge blimp hangar. Oh, well, there's a, it has a sign that says Air Museum in really big letters over there. That's impressive. Well, now I guess if you have a really big hangar, you can make a really big sign on the side of it, huh? You see the runways and everything. You're going to have to turn this way anyway. a pretty obvious air museum as it turns out. Not hard to spot that. I gotta say the sights today have been very easy to spot. <laughs> this one especially. That is, uh, that is quite obvious right there. Got some stuff right in front of it. Air museum. No kidding. Okay, now we finally get over to Portland. And a whole bunch of bridges. Turning. Well, we have left all the hills behind us and are now in the flatter valley areas of Oregon. Still 10 minutes away from Selwood Bridge, which is the southernmost bridge that we are trying to take a look at on presumably the Willamette River on our way into Portland International. Okay, we are arriving at Portland here after a fairly long flight, well over two hours. And actually, before we start looking at bridges, I am going to switch to the main tanks again. Since I reserved that fuel specifically for this purpose. We're at 2,000 feet. And we need to turn basically north. We'll stay at 2,000 feet. I'm not going to get up close and personal with these things. But we certainly see a number of bridges here. And I think these are added by the mod. Again, uh, from flightsim.to, a Portland Bridges mod. I forget who made it though. Looking good. Yep, they all look nice and unique. I love Portland just for these bridges. Them being all sort of peculiar in their own in their own special way as peculiarity goes. And we do have photogrammetry for the buildings, I believe. Okay, so with all that, let me see if I can land this safely. Let's do the whole ATC thing. I haven't really paid much attention to ATC so far, but you know, I've been low and slow, it's fine. Okay, well, we can see Portland International quite clearly right there. I probably should give it some more room. Especially since we're going 28 left. Well, we got some nice bridges in the Portland downtown area across the Willamette River, but we've got some weird stuff going on right here. Could have used a fix on that one, I think. I think Frontier is actually 
ahead of me. Yeah, there's that frontier flight, I think, that they're talking to. And I think it's ahead of me. That's not great. <laughs> A little bit of flaps. Line of gear. Well, we're on track and everything. Yeah, that bridge to the right there. I need to find if somebody's made a replacement for that one. I mean, that's pretty conspicuous this close to the airport and everything. Ah, they're waving Frontier around because I'm coming in. I get priority. Haha. -ha. You are too fast. Lots of sound in here with the flaps and landing gear deployed. Oh no you don't, airliner. You better hold short right there. Don't you dare. I see you. I'm coming in. I'm going a little bit high to avoid him actually. You are not busting my brand new plane that I have ownership of. Clear of him, don't worry. Everything's safe, perfectly safe around here. Okay, we are down. Do you think that's gentle enough not to do any damage? I think I can turn off here. Doing so. Okay, taxi to parking. Oh, that was the gates. Oops. I guess I'm gonna get a gate. <laughs> this is awkward. Oh, I just heard that. Uh, is that one take? That was the one taking off or landing. Oh, I guess I can't change it now. I think that one's. That one better pull up. Okay, it was taking off. That little guy was going, I was not expecting this little plane. I was expecting a much larger plane. Okay, we'll figure. Okay, so. Well, avionics, master switch. Uh, oh! Uh, okay, no, I, I still need to do things. Uh, off, all switches off except for battery, so the lights are off. Okay, fuel selectors are both off. Control lock. Well, I mean, battery should be off now. Okay, and control lock. So, pad. Control lock. Okay, so I think we've got that all done. Let's have engine covers. And intake covers, pitot covers, wheel chocks. Front passenger door. Alright. We're still pretty clean. The options we don't want to change. And... Gosh. Well, I guess we have... We should inspect... We'll inspect... Yeah, we'll inspect it now. Let's see what happened. I'm curious. Uh, does that mean that the left and right brakes are completely gone? Wow, the spark plugs need repair real quick. That's not good. Oil supply obviously needing top topped off eventually will be fine. But seriously, the brakes are like completely zero. Is that right? Well, I'm gonna leave them all be. I mean, uh, we could we we should top off the oil supply at least. That's fair. Well, I, I didn't want to do all the repairs, okay? 
all defective items re replaced. No, I didn't want that. I want just this oil. Yeah. Okay, we'll deal with the spark plugs and all after the next flight. Hopefully they'll hold. I don't know if... Well, well, we'll see if they cause any serious trouble if they're worn out and not entirely defective. Alright, so that is the end of that flight. Our passenger can disembark if she wants to. And with that, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.